deep down the Retron Square is quite a simple product. It enables you to play your Game Boy and Game Boy Advance cartridges directly from a TV or monitor using the included HDMI cable and they do this through emulation. Think of it as a Game Boy console because in reality that's exactly what it is. My name is Brandon and welcome to Retro Dodo. We've been keeping an eye on this product ever since they announced it in early 2020 and I personally have been excited to get my hands on it since then. The Game Boy Color was my first ever handheld as a kid, so being able to play Game Boy games on my monitor between jobs with just the switch of a button is something I'd honestly never thought I'd get to do. It's made it more accessible, I no longer need to worry about those bloody AA batteries anymore, the only worry I now have is if I have enough cartridges. We've had mixed opinions with Hyperkin's previous products and the Retron Square hasn't really changed that. Hyperkin have synced affordability with decent build quality and usually that wasn't a thing, they just had affordable average products, but the Retron Square genuinely feels like a console, not just a chip in a plastic shell. You can tell they've taken time to develop the appearance of the console to intrigue many retro gamers, especially with the transparent blue and the nostalgic DMG purple buttons. But it feels like an unfinished product, and we'll get to why shortly. The box is well presented, making the unboxing a pleasant experience. Inside you get the console itself, a HDMI cable, USB to USB-C for power, and a controller that has a 10 foot cable. The controller itself feels like a classic SNES controller, it comes with a large D-pad, chunky start select buttons and 4 action buttons. Why 4 action buttons we do not know because on any Game Boy there's only 2, but we guess this controller was for previous Hyperkin consoles and they just decided to perhaps take a shortcut rather than make a new controller. If this cost any more than the current $75 price tag, we may have complained about this, but we feel $75 is a reasonable price for this console. So that said, we'll, we'll let it slide. And again, the shoulder buttons are okay, a bit light and not really that responsive, but we can deal with that. Your Game Boy game simply slots into the cartridge slot at the top and with the press of the button and a little load up time, you'll be ready to play. On the back of the Retron Square you will find a slider that allows you to play in either 4x3 or 16x9 aspect ratio. Uh, this is a neat feature but we just like to stick with 4x3 in all honesty. When playing original Game Boy and Game Boy Color cartridges the gameplay was flawless, everything smooth as it should be, no frame rate drops, no screen tearing, just a pleasant experience. And the audio felt as if it was natural and not sped up which was surprising. However, when you move on to the Game Boy Advance games, we get to see the real laziness behind Hyperkin as a brand. They have stated on their website and even on the box that Game Boy Advance games are in beta, but give no information about what that exactly means. In reality, that means it's actually unplayable. If you can get a game to finally load, you'll see that it's incredibly clunky, poor audio, low frame rates and just a bit of a cluster cluck. How they even legally got away with putting this as a feature on their products we do not know. It's like they're just waiting for the community to do it themselves and then they'll finally fix it, saving them a lot of money and time. And that's exactly what the community have done, kind of. We had a tweet by one of our followers by the name of SMB Flurry who mentioned that if you plug in a keyboard and press F1 and simply change the frame skip, the problem is solved. YouTuber called Too Many Handhelds has tested this and it's actually true. So why Hyperkin hasn't changed this, I'm not too sure, but it's disappointing to see that Hyperkin are taking a back seat. Perhaps down the line this will be solved in a firmware update, but it just seems like they've released a half working product which doesn't look good for their company. And on the same subject, there's no menu system, no way of changing the borders on your emulator, not even saving frames or anything, it's just loading the cartridge and that's it. Which again shows you that they haven't put much time and effort into making the emulator fun to use or even customise. And this is a easy thing to do. This product simply loads your Game Boy and Game Boy Color games, that's it. 
nothing else really. It's a great looking console, it's definitely making Game Boy games more accessible for a bigger audience, which we love, but we just wish Hyperkin became more strict with the quality of their products. This product could have been superb. They were 90% of the way there, but that 10% that they left the community to deal with is the big problem here. Once they get that fixed, this will be a great product, especially if they give us some customization and more settings within the emulator. It's just a shame to see another average Hyperkin product, even if the idea was great. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you want to go even one step further, you can sign up to our Patreon to get early access to our videos and monthly giveaways. As per usual, thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.